Hello there guys and welcome back to Rebuilding History and in today's episode we have got a away match against Hitchin Town and it's a big game considering the league table which we'll look up, talk about in a minute but first off let's go through what we've been doing since you were last with us which was the unfortunate 1-0 defeat to Merthyr Town fortunately for us though after that we've been on a bit of a good run of form again since uh, that defeat we haven't lost since that Merthyr Town game we then went on to play a home match against um, St. Neots, which is actually a little bit of local rivalry to us. I don't think they're that too far away in terms of location. I'm not. I think they're not too far away. I'm not. I may have conf may have confused St. Neots with St. Ives, but correct me in the comments. But as you can see here, it was a one-all draw. Based on the stats, it looks like that seems like a fair result. But we did concede with just two minutes to play, and that was just a bit of a frustration. So, in the end, we could have easily got the three points out of the game, but to get back to or to stop the uh, losing streak was that was was important and we managed to get a point out of the game and we helped set the ads out a little bit when it comes to their plight because they're pretty they're really close to the relegation zone at the moment uh, glider with the goal and then Oliver Jury equalizing there uh, we then went on to have another draw this time away at AFC Kempston uh, we actually took the lead both times and this is probably a game that I would say that's gotten away from us and we should have won Ryan Williams scored after four minutes then Liam Harris equalised after 49 minutes. Justin May made it 2-1 after 69 minutes. Before Steve Warren equalised after 78 minutes. Just as I was about to make my final couple of substitutions. Actually no, I've already made my substitutions. And unfortunately that backfired on us. And uh, we weren't able to um, respond and get the winner. So a bit of disappointment there. We weren't able to um, get the result that we needed. To uh, oh, I think we should have pr probably beaten AFC Kempston. Given that they were, f they were further down the table than us. But... Again, one of those things, we just have to move on, on to the next game. Uh, we then went on to win 2-0 at home to Salisbury. Now, this was an absolute mugging. Based off the stats, you can see here, Salisbury were all over us in the first half. And we should have been, oh, they were all over us. But then Mikalidis scored after 16 minutes. And they were just all over us, trying to uh, open the scoring. They had way more clear-cut chances than us in the whole game. And then Luke Harding made it 2-0, made it as you can see, based off the stats. 8 shots, 5 on target compared to their 13 shots, 6 on target. They should have really put a couple of goals in. So we've 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 beaten Salisbury both oh, in both fixtures this season, which was a, a fantastic achievement and is also was really beneficial in the league because they're pretty close to us right now in the league table. If we go, we will look at that in a minute. But yeah, Mikalees with a goal and Luke Harding with his second goal of the season from a corner. Very rarely we get goals from corners actually, so it was nice to actually uh, get a, get a goal from that point. I mean, he actually won the header against, I think, three defenders. So, great effort from Harding to uh, put us 2-0 up. And that actually gave us a little bit of distance in that game. We then went on to draw 0-0 away at Poole. And this was a ball fest. Nothing happened in this game. Yes, Poole had more shots. But there were no highlights of note throughout the game. And, to be honest, 0-0 was kind of the fair result in the end. Yes, we had, lo we had loads of fouls. Again, 26 compared to 9. But, yeah, one of those things. Finished 0-0. Nothing happened in the whole game more of a defensive effort for both teams as you can see based off the uh, player ratings at the end and not very good ratings for the uh, forward players so it was a nil nil there That's our th that was our third draw in four games but it was our second straight clean sheet which was fantastic we then went on t to win 2 nil at home to Weymouth avenging the defeat that we had earlier on in the season against them away from home glided with two goals he's really starting to kick on again he really I think he desperately wants another n n he wants to stay with us next season Two goals, a 31st minute opener, and then a penalty in the 89th minute pretty much sealed the deal. We had chances to um, increase the lead, but I'm glad we managed to um, get the uh, get the win and also just get another second goal before the end of the game because Weymouth could have easily just thrown everybody forward and tried to uh, get a scrappy goal to equalise. But I'm glad we've got that. We had that cushion through that penalty, which made us win the game 2-0. And then the last game was a 3-0 uh, win against Barnwell. All, everything happened though in the second half. Um, I'm trying to remember from what I saw from last time out. It was a bit. I think it was yesterday when I played the game. I think Barwell were on top to start with, and then we uh, turned the screw completely. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I do remember what happened. Their goalkeeper had a massive howl. As you can see, 4.6 rating. He tried running onto a ball, or he tried to intercept a ball that Glide was running onto. Completely missed it and allowed Glide to score. And then for the Bloomfield goal after 63 minutes, he uh, it was a back pass from the uh, defender which he didn't retrieve, and Bloomfield was onto it and just slotted it past him. So really, it was more of the, about the goalkeeper having a complete disaster than us 
playing well. Yes, our defence, we were really good defensively, as you can see there. Everybody above sevens, which was fantastic. And an 8.8 .8 from Glider there with a, another two goals added to his tally. But yeah, 4.6 for a goalkeeper. That's, uh, you, could, you know he's had a bad day with that uh, sort of rating. Yeah, he's, he's up there. Sorry, I scrolled down a little bit there. But 3-0 convincing win. Despite, yes it, was, yes, it was goalkeeper errors, but we had to take advantage of that, and we, and we did so. So, and actually that made us have four straight clean sheets. I think that's the first time I've ever managed to do that in Football Manager this, this in this particular game. So, in terms of the league, it's looking very, very interesting now. As you can see, we are one point outside of the playoffs. We have gone on a li this little run of form we've been on has allowed us to close up the gap on these teams ahead of us that are currently in the playoffs, and we have an outside chance of making them with uh, nine games to go. Two, one point behind Salisbury in fifth, and two and three points behind Banbury in fourth, with 27 points still on the table. And most of town could be, it could be caught within nine games, so we could easily get into the playoffs here. But I don't really want to talk that up too much because our record against some of these teams in the top five, except for Salisbury, our record against everyone else isn't that great. Yes, we beat Banbury and Merthyr Town in a couple of games, but they then beat they've beaten us on the return legs. And Lemington, Kettering have already smashed us a couple of times, and uh, Lemington as well. Uh, we've got still yet to play, and also we've got Hereford coming up in the next couple of games as well. Truro is another one. They've dropped down the table, but I expect them to uh, continue to make a challenge. And it's actually quite a few couple of uh, big games today if we go to the actual fixtures. As you can see here, yeah, Hereford are playing Salisbury, so it's a sixth versus fifth. So if we can take advantage of that and win our, our away match against Hitchin, one of these two, we're going to leapfrog one of these two teams, which will be absolutely crucial. I mean, we could also leap. I think we could leapfrog both of them. I'm not 100% sure. Depends on what happens with the overall. Uh, result but I know that they ha both of these teams are in front so we'd probably have to hope that they both draw but we'll have to wait and see what happens on there and then Truro at home to Banbury so tough game for Banbury to go away to Truro who are trying to get back into the playoff spot that they've been in for so long any what other particular fixtures that look interesting uh, doesn't look like it. it looks like every other game is there's a relegation battle between St. Neitz and uh, Hayes and Yelling which will be uh, interesting to watch but we're not watching that game we're going to be focused on our game which is a uh, the way game against Hitchin Town, which you drew in the last time we played them. Let's hope we can uh, carry on our good run of form here. We're going to go for pretty strong lineup that we've gone for so far. Reese Bills in goal, Ossie Fuwa, Harding, Utteridge, and Carrillo in the uh, defensive positioning uh, decision areas. Alfie Davidson back from suspension now. Finally, he got suspended again, which was not good. But we still managed to keep clean sheets even without him, so that was perfect. Callum Frew in the deep line playmaker role. Michaelidis and May on the left and right hand sides with Glider and Williams up front. Steve Reed has also come back from injury, which has been fantastic. And he's now on the bench. He's coming back into the uh, swing of things by coming off the bench. We've got Miles, May, and Bloomfield all coming off the bench, I think. Because Bloomfield actually scored in the last game. And I kind of want to give uh, Williams uh, back his uh, starting spot. Although, has he got a better 7.3 7 starting ra star rating? That's Williams got 6.2. I'm actually going to give Bloomfield the start again and hopefully. He will, he will reward the faith that I have in him. And if not, then we'll just bring on Williams later on and or, and or Steve Reed. But without further ado, let us get into this match. I'm quietly confident, but I want to be a little bit negative as well because I don't want to uh, shoot ourselves in the foot here because in the last couple of uh, live comms, when we've been on good form, we've lost. So we've got to make sure we uh, guard against complacency here. They probably are, they are quite a dangerous team, the fact that Hitchin are just in the... Uh, Oh, they're in mid-table, but they're not too bad of a side. Uh, they've got a couple of injuries, though, to their um, left-back and right-back, so we've got to hopefully take advantage of that. Uh, was nearly closed down the wrong player there. Um, weaker foot on the left mid the right mid. They're playing a standard 4-4-2, looks like it. Maybe one of these guys could be a advanced playmaker. I'll actually have to figure out who it is whilst the game is progressing. Um, let's see what we can do here. Uh, I'm going to go for that, I think, because I don't really want to big up us getting into the playoffs because that will probably uh, uh, make some of the players feel quite nervous and trying to and be uh, under too much pressure. So we just got to keep them motivated more likely, which is which just seems to have been the uh, the case here from this team talk. So without further ado, let us begin. Hopefully, we can get, get a good result here, and we'll have to keep an eye on what's happening in the uh, other games between Salisbury and Hereford and uh, Truro and Banbury to see where we end up at the end of this game as Utteridge wins the header there and it's the end of the, of the uh, first highlight. I also forgot to mention we've got the worst goal difference out of everybody at the moment as Dorchester go 1-0 up and that's put them up into 5th place 
right now. As you can see, it was, it was really close on the table, as we've now got a highlight here. Uh, Hitching on the ball here, Warsaw back to Shorok. Elvidge, Pring on this left-hand side. He's put a ball up towards Byrne. We're going to be exposed here at the defence. And he slotted it in. The first, obviously, the uh, the first time we're back on the uh, live comms, and, we've con and we haven't conceded in four games, and now we've conceded. It's just typical, isn't it? Typical football manager style. Oh, we've uh, we we know we've got a live com coming up. We're gonna uh, ensure that you can see the goal. Okay, here is the highlight. Pring with a little long ball towards Burn. Break splits through the, our defence, and Pr Burn just slots it past Bills at his near post. Unfortunately, that was a bit frustrating. Bills has been improving his positioning as he's been progressing so far, but it's not been enough so far uh, to keep that that sort of shot out at the moment. We've got to. Uh, Get a little bit more attacking here. Yes, we're only still only two points back back as it stands, but we kind of want to uh, get the equaliser here, and we'd only be a point back if um, we can get that get that draw. Uh, highlight here again straight away. Whilst I've been talking, here's Osifua. It's right inside back to Harding. Please no mistake in the back four here. Here's through back to Davidson. Here it's a bit uh, negative football here, but Bloomfield's got it now. Back to through in the centre of the field. Here's Mikalidis. Might put a ball towards uh, Osifu, but he said he looks for through. Back to Bloomfield, uh, who's w lost lost out, unfortunately. And it looks like they're going to come on to the break here. And here's Byrne. Uh, one back by Harding, though, but it's won back again by the hitching uh, defender, Webb, who's now on the ball up to Elvidge, who's on the yellow card. Warshaw back to Elvidge. Back to Byrne, who's scored already. He might cross a... And I don't know what's happened there, but Bills has just let that in. Ian Byrne with his second goal of the game in his 15th of the season. What was Bills doing there? I have no idea what is going on. He wasn't making any silly mistakes in the last couple of games. He was just saving everything left and right. He's just palmed it back into the goal. Oh, that's really annoying. In three shots they've had, or three shots, three on target, two of them resulted in goals. That's not good enough, in my opinion. Uh, here is through, and we haven't really registered any chances here. No clear cut chances. Through loses the ball out again, and uh, Harding's managed to win it back, though, after uh, intercepting the ball that was heading towards Byrne, who's on a hat trick now. Uh, through looking for uh, Bloomfield there, it's got to Bloomfield, but it's lost out to Shorrock. Here's Pring on the left-hand side. Uh, back to Elvidge, to Shorrock. Uh, Walsh, they're plastering it around us here. This is not good. Here's Burn again. He's going to score again, but Bills this time makes the save. And that's their third clear-cut chance of the game already, and it's uh, less than 40 minutes into the game. Pring, ping, Pring with the uh, corner, but it's headed away comfortably. We're going to have to... Uh, do some team talking here because they are not. This is not uh, going well. Oh, Bambury are two 0 up on tr on Truro, as you can see right there. As we now head into half time, yes, we we are going to be telling this team off because we are doing an injustice to our fans here that have come to and travelled to a uh, Hitchin today. Um, we're gonna are we gonna keep it at that? I think we are gonna keep it as it is for now, and then we're gonna have to make the changes as we. Uh, I think probably around 50 minutes or so as we now kick off the second half. Let's hope that little uh, dressing room blast can uh, cause a, or can get some momentum on our side. But it doesn't look like a Stabana with a free kick, which cleared away. Back to Walshaw. He might take a shot here, uh, but he doesn't. And Davidson's won it back, but it's, got, it's deflected back to Stabana. Uh, Shorrock, Walshaw. Still another attack on for Hitchin. Here's Rowley, who's come on as a substitute. Uh, we tried clearing it away there, but unfortunately it's come back into our half. Walshaw again, here's Pring on the left-hand side, he might take a shot, and it just about misses the uh, goal and hits the uh, side netting there. And Lucalese has now picked up an injury, so we're going to have to uh, take him off, I think. We are going to bring on Steve Reed for the uh, remainder of the game, and also I might bring on um, Ryan Williams for Glider, because he's been... T and actually, no, I'm going to bring on Ryan Williams for, uh, for Bloomfield, because Bloomfield's uh, fitness is not doing that well. We need to do something here, just to uh, try and change the game here. Otherwise, it will be a third straight defeat, live com defeat here. And this is not good for my uh, reputation here of uh, doing the live comms. It looks like these sort of games, though, unfortunately, are the reason as to why I don't think we're going to make the playoffs. And if we do, we're going to go get, get knocked out in the first round. Because we can't seem to beat, win the crucial games against teams at the top, near the top. Yes, we beat Salisbury, but we've not been doing it enough to uh, warrant us being a playoff contender. We've just been relying on teams screw messing up in their previous games. Here's Williams, which might have a chance here for Glider, and it's saved by the goalkeeper. That was our first clear-cut chance of the game, and we weren't able to take advantage of that. That needed to go in if we wanted to um, get back into the game. As the ball goes in, Blasby clears away, though, for um, 
hitching. Balls goes back in, and here's Davidson with the header, and it's just gone wide of the post. And that's that's better. That was better. And we've got an instant highlight straight away with Rowley taking the throw in from Stabana. Here's Shorrock. Ball up in towards the two strikers, but it's gone back. But here's Byrne, who's on a hat-trick. Ball through to Walshaw, and it's saved well by Bills. That's what he was doing in the previous games before today. Tr saving a lot of crucial chances that the... Uh, opposition had so we've got to uh, we hope I was hoping we have a little bit more of that during this game and unfortunately that hasn't been the case and I don't know what else to do to be honest because everyone else has been I mean I could take off a centre back but that's not very attacking really um, I don't know what to do really I take off Callum through because he's just tired I think we'll just have to do this uh, one of those garbage time moments and hope that it just the roll of the dice goes ahead and we would go on overload because we just need to, we need to score we need to try and score at some point here and also we're going to start pumping balls into the box because we just need anything to go our way now with 14, 13, 14 minutes to go. We're into coming up to the last five minutes so as you can see it's only, oh Hereford actually taking the lead against Salisbury here and they're now in fifth place, three points clear of us. I was going to say we were only going to be one point behind as it stood but Hereford's win at, winning ahead against Salisbury has now resulted in us um, being behind, being now three points behind the playoffs with eight games remaining as Bills takes it forward and kicks it upfield towards May. Wins it. We wins the header though, but Shorrock is there again. He's been really, really good for Hitchin so far. He's been involved in quite a lot of things. May's won it back though, uh, but Glider's then lost it out to Webb, who then pull, puts the ball towards uh, Walshaw, but he gives it away. Uh, Webb, but Davidson's won it back. It's ping pong ball, ping pong, ping pin ball football at the moment. May puts the ball up towards Williams. He might have a chance here though. And he wasn't able to, but it's a penalty. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. I thought he miscontrolled it, and it, that's resulted in a penalty. It was actually a foul by the uh, Hitchin defender. Let's hope we can, if we can score this, that will be uh, make an interesting last couple of minutes or so. But Gliders hit it straight at the keeper, and it's one of those games where nothing is going in for us. Oh no, this is not good. Into the last minute now, and unfortunately for us, there goes our winning streak again. There goes our good run of form again, like we had in the past couple of episodes. I'm going to tell them off again. This is unacceptable, and yep, yeah, as you can see, they're all fired up and motivated. We've got to do better in the next game, and then also in the last eight games, if we want to uh, realistically keep the pressure on and possibly make the playoffs. I mean, now, because of these sort of results, I just don't think we are capable enough to make them. And if we do, we will just lose out in the first round because it's either going to be fourth or fifth, realistically, based on the current points tally and what we what the point and the points that we're currently on at the moment. And also, our goal difference is rubbish compared to everybody else in that uh, playoff spot area. Okay, so Mikhailis looks like he is out for two to three weeks. I am going to get, leave him to the physio because I don't really want to. Uh, Risk. Uh, he'll be wear protective equipment for two to three weeks in order to take part in light training. I might just go for the two weeks because that means he's going to be. Out. It, that's guaranteed that he'll be out for two weeks, and uh, it means that Reed will now step have to step up and uh, take charge in that attacking mid right position. So, the next game w that you guys will see will be the final game of the season at home to Hereford. I mean, there are some couple of interesting games coming up with Leamington, Hereford, and Truro, but based off the result today, I just can't see us um, getting the uh, the the best results but you never know what what might happen in the next eight games or so I mean we could turn it around like we've done the last time we were off, went off camera so we'll just have to wait and see what happens I mean I'm going to pencil in the uh, the final game of the season being at, Hayes, at home to Hayes and Yedding depending on what happens though that might be a crucial game at the end so again depends on what happens off camera but I will I hope you guys enjoyed the episode despite us unfortunately losing our unbeaten run again on a uh, live com and also losing again on the live form. That's three straight defeats. We've got to try and uh, end that run of form. Hopefully in the Hayes and Yedding game we'll be able to do that. But despite that, if you guys enjoyed the episode, please leave a like, comment and subscribe for more con FM content. And I'll see you guys for the next episode, which will, which will either be the Hayes and Yedding home game or any important game that might come up depending on what happens in the, uh, the next eight games or so. So... This is this is now the end of the uh, the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it despite the result, and I'll see you guys for the next part, which will be the home game against Hayes and Yelling or a crucial game on the uh, route to the possible route to the playoffs. But I doubt it very much. So until that next game, I will see you guys later.